Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video here in the preview event for the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Today we're taking a look at a green-white plus one plus one counter deck, an archetype we've definitely seen before, but it did get some nice upgrades with the latest set, including at two mana Bristly Bill, which gives us an extra plus one counter just by hitting our land drop, and can later also double the number of plus one counters on our creature. Then we're also playing two copies of the Collector's Cage, which has Hideaway, so it's a way to maybe cheat something expensive in to play. I did consider playing some prototype creatures, like maybe the Steel Seraph can also be a way to give our creatures flying. Definitely worth considering in this archetype. I just ended up going with a few Planeswalkers at the top end instead, but you could certainly go bigger. And then for one mana, this can give us a plus one plus one counter. And then if we control three or more creatures with different powers, we get to play the Exalt card. So it's pretty easy in a plus one counter deck to kind of modify your creatures so they all have different powers. And having a zero powered creature thanks to the Enduring Bond Warden also makes that a lot easier as it can give another creature its plus one counter when it enters with backup. And then another very important addition is the Ornery Tumblewag, giving us an additional plus one counter each turn, and whenever it attacks while saddled, this is pretty similar to how vehicles work, so we tap creatures with power two or greater, and then we get to saddle the Tumblewag, and now when it attacks, we can double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature, so especially powerful with a trampling botanical brawler, which can take the opponent out in one or two attacks. And uh, that kind of sums up all the new cards. Then we've got some of the usual suspects at one mana with Iron Apprentice, which enters with a plus one plus one counter on it. And when it dies, we can move all of its counters onto a different creature. So it's a relatively safe investment, assuming it doesn't get exiled. And then we can even double its counters when it enters. If we have an Ozolith on the battlefield, which will give us an additional plus one counter each time. And for two mana, can give a creature a plus one counter. So if we have both Ozolith and Cage in play, Cage is the better way to give us counters since it's cheaper and can be used at instant speed. But of course we could activate both artifacts if we have the mana for it. And then we've got the scout at one mana as well, letting us explore, potentially picking up a plus one counter, making sure we hit our land drops. Could easily be replaced. I also considered playing the pixie, which is a new one mana flyer that can maybe pick up one of our permanents. Can be a way to maybe pick up the bond warden to re-enable it. Could also maybe pick up the cage after we've already enabled hideaway to maybe hide away a different card. So I would definitely experiment with a pixie going forward. And uh, then at four mana, I've got some fun offs. Archangel Elspeth can be important to give our creatures flying, and uh, that can be a way to kind of break through a board stall. Can also make life linking soldier tokens, which helps out against sweeper heavy decks to make sure we always have creatures to put counters onto. And then we've got Wandering Emperor giving us a bit of removal, as well as more plus one counters. Then I'm trying one copy of the Sovereign. Not a must have, but seems fun to try out. If it gets to attack, we can get a lot of extra counters. And then we've got Elspeth Resplendent as well, another way to give our creatures flying and other various keywords. And then at two mana, of course, another important one is the Dusk Legion Duelist, which draws us a card whenever it gets a plus one counter, only triggers once each turn. Although with cards like Collector's Cage and uh, Wandering Emperor, we can also maybe give it a plus one counter during the opponent's turn. So we get to draw two cards per turn cycle with one Duelist. So that's also quite nice. And then, as we mentioned, Brawler kind of grows by itself as we put counters onto other creatures. So that can also hit for a ton of damage. And then our mana base, lots of dual lands. Don't want to play too many farm lands since they do enter tapped early and we want to keep the curve relatively low. So I don't want to have too many of them enter tapped. But then we've got, of course, a Razor Verge Thicket and the Brush Land to uh, help us in the early turns. And then a couple more basics as well as the channel lands for additional interaction. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and... Uh... Our hand is missing kind of a plus one counter generator to kickstart Brawler and Duelist. Of course, most of the cards in our deck will fit that description. This is maybe still worth a try. All right, Scout is next. So I'll start with Duelist and then playing Brawler plus Scout can maybe grow the Brawler if we explore a non-land card. Harvester could maybe take out Duelist next turn. And uh, Tumblewag was a decent draw, even though Harvester can then take out the Tumblewag if we don't grow it here. So I could still go Brawler plus Scout. 
it's just not quite as mine efficient next turn with a double two drop. So I think it's worth it to just uh, draw a card here. Attack if they want to trade. That's probably still acceptable, or we can just wait. Although with another duelist in hand, I'm more worried about them taking out the tumblewag, to be fair. But they might have a different answer. If not, we can go Brawler plus Duelist. Counter on Duelist. Alright, case of the Stanch Skeleton's fine. Could potentially use Boseju, but I need it as a land drop. And then we can saddle the Tumblewag. Counter on Duelist to draw. And then we'll grow the Brawler some more, I guess. Not a bad turn. Corpse Appraiser goes digging. So they're maybe digging towards a combo. Well, at least our deck is good at keeping up the pressure. So we can play Sovereign and uh, the Apprentice. Which is a guarantee to grow the Brawler. And then we can saddle. Counter on Duelist, attack, and then if I double the Brawler's counters, that's going to be pretty effective. Small chance they had cut down in hand, which could answer Tumblewag if I put the counters there. So, yeah, let's uh, go all out. 16-16 Trample. Should get the job done, and our opponent takes it. So yeah, that's the power of Tumblewag. Definitely an upgrade over the Soldier that also gave you a plus one counter each turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play here. Do we have a Keeper? Yeah, I think so. I could wait on playing Bond Warden until after we play Duelist to maybe draw, but we have both Cage and Ozolith. I think it's maybe still worth it, actually. Turn one Swamp, do I play Duelist or do I wait? I'll just go for Ozolith. In case they had a cut down in hand. Servant, 1-3 Death Touch, trying to assemble some combo perhaps. Okay, so now I can play Pair of Apprentices, which at least enter as 2-2. Two -two. And then wait until we get a third lane to go Duelist plus Bond Warden to draw. So we can uh, block the servants to prevent them from tutoring, perhaps. Opponent drawing. So they're definitely digging for a combo. Might be the blood letter combo. Still no land, unfortunately. I guess we'll uh, have to play the duelist then. If I attack, I can move counters onto duelist to draw. Maybe that's worth it. Opponent takes it. And now Shieldred will punish the card draw. But that's alright. Okay, so we're gonna wanna diversify power and toughness to set up Collector's Cage. We've got a zero powered creature which can make a four powered creature, so that helps. But I wouldn't be able to cast a spell for free right now. So maybe start here. That can set up Elspeth next turn. Not opposed to still playing the cage. And then next turn between cage and Ozolith we'll figure it out. 
And then Elspeth Resplendent seems good. Could go for Wandering Emperor as well. But let's go for the 5 drop. And pass the turn. So is it time for Bloodletter? No Avarice. They could have targeted us and essentially dealt 9 damage with Shieldred. But now they'll gain some life instead. And so they did get to search for whatever card they wanted. Okay, so take our draw step. Opponent's still at 20. Now we can use Cage to grow Duelists. Get an Elspeth to fly the Duelist. Yeah, I guess that's where we start. Fine Pond Warden. Could also give it lifelink here. Show them what you've got. But then they just trade for the servants. So I think we want to fly first. And then for now, could still activate also Lith if I'd like. Grow it some more. And sure, I'll play Bond Warden, go all out. Don't have the best backup plan if they destroy the duelist, but with all the life gain from shield roots, I want to make sure we can at least try to present lethal next turn. It's going to be blood letters, so they probably have the other combo piece in hand already. We get to untap, take our draw step. Can give life link to the duelists, hoping they don't have go for the throats. Can also jump a different creature, but uh, yeah, I kind of need to force them to jump with a blood letter to have a chance. All right, let's see what happens. Draw another Ozolith. And then we'll attack. Elspeth can make a token. So it did force him to chump at least. And this can help diversify in case of a board wipe. Evolved Sleeper's fine. And Gix, that doesn't uh, help them. So it looks like the Duelists might get there. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, not the most exciting hand, but also Lith goes a long way. So we'll keep. Could wait on playing Bond Warden until later. Although we might just end up activating Ozolith on turn 3 alongside playing another Bond Warden, so in that case it's fine. Would be really sad if there's a spell pierce, but there might just be a consider or a gaze. Could point towards a reanimator strategy. Geralt hits the graveyard. And a helping hand gets it back. And can immediately enable it here. Alright, that's pretty good. So kind of a new addition for the Monastery Mentor deck. So we'll activate Ozolith and play another Bond Warden. I could pump the first one, or we can spread out the wealth a little bit. And then hopefully find something exciting next turn. If not, we can keep activating Ozolith. Opponent going for another gaze. 
So they might have another helping hand ready to go. And they found a Monastery Mentor. Uh, looks like they'll get it back as well. Yeah, a recommission. So, opponent's going very wide, which is something our deck struggles with. Since we can build up a large creature, but that's usually not enough. So play Bill. And grow Bond Warden. Can attack, keeping up high Gancho. Could have also just activated Ocelith before attacking, but then they wouldn't have double blocked. Fading Hope also pretty good when we're building these large creatures. And there's still a Fading Hope available. And they're just gonna cast it now. Take eight. And we should be dead next turn. Well, that was certainly an above average start for the opponent's deck. We'll attack and then maybe grow a Bond Warden on defense. Can also use Bill to double the number of counters, but don't think that's gonna come up. For now, Ledger Shredder. Another way to put these three drops in the graveyard. So they even have a flying blocker should we find Elspeth to fly one of our creatures. So don't have that out. And uh, sure, I guess I'll jump. Found Botanical Brawler. Trample would have been useful earlier. So can uh, attack, see the opponent jump. And then uh, should be game next turn, pretty much. We'll just send Bill. They can probably take it and then attack back for lethal next turn after triggering prowess a bunch. See a bunch more mentors in the graveyard as well. So yeah, the game was decided pretty early on with that helping hand. This seems like a rough one for the counter's deck. And there's another Fading Hope as well. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand's not great without white mana, to be fair. So we're gonna struggle to enable the cage as well. Take a mulligan. Alright, this can be worth a shot. And then probably keep all the creatures. Question is third land versus maybe the collector's cage. I'll uh, try and enable the cage. And then wait on playing my one drops until after we play Ozolith. And 
then we're going to want to probably keep the Bond Warden as an O1 and load counters onto an Apprentice. So we diversify power and toughness for Collector's Cage. Okay, so play the cage, can pay for make disappear. Alright, they're gonna go for the throat, the only legal target, but it does prevent us from going off with the cage at least. So, hide away, find duelist, so not the most exciting hit, and then uh, we'll grow an apprentice some more. Cage is cheaper than activating Ocelith. Of course, if we have three mana, we can do both. And Grease Gambits. Alright, so opponent gets to make some bats. They will have to sack one end of turn. And Boseju, now also potentially an answer to it. Should they try and give it to me with uh, Falcon, which they can potentially disguise and turn face up next turn. So I'm going to want to keep two mana available if I can help it. So for now, use Ozolith. So that if they double block, I could still use Collector's Cage to grow the Apprentice at instant speed. They're just going to chump. All right, we'll let damage happen. And then Cage I can also use end of turn if I don't need to use Poseju. All right, there it is. So in response to the trigger, I can uh, channel Boseju. Which will also make them sacrifice Coveted Falcon. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. And next turn, just pump our two creatures and attack for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has potential if we can hit our land drops to enable Bristly Bill and to cast our spells. I'll try it. Turn one Dream Thief. Another Duelist, not exactly what we were hoping for. Probably still playing a Duelist on turn two since I can expect it to get removed. Okay, might be a graveyard deck. Bond Warden can be a way to grow the duelist. If we fail to draw land, that might be necessary. Opponent plotting Pitiless Carnage. Okay, found the land. So I can either play a Tumblewag or go Bill, play a land, play Bond Warden. I think I prefer Tumblewag, just get that going. Can still draw off the Duelist. And then maybe next turn saddle it to get more counters going. And then gaining flying with Elspeth could be a way to maybe end the game if the ground gets a bit stalled. Carnage can be Pretty synergistic with effects that return lands from the graveyard as well. Since they can sack them and then bring those lands back. But it looks like an Insidious Roots deck. Still missing the namesake card. So next turn I can just play another Tumblewag, growing the first one, saddling it as well. And this one can grow the Duelist. That one goes for Carnage. Sacking Green Thief, Butler, and Maverick. And Gorehounds, everything. So they get to see a lot of cards. We 
We just want to keep hitting our land drops to eventually cast Elspeth. All right, no lanes, finds Emperor instead. Still probably down to play Tumblewag. Or we could go Duelist plus Bond Warden to make sure we hit our land drop. Yeah, maybe that's safer. And then we can saddle this one, attack, and put counter on the smaller duelist which hasn't drawn us yet. Alright, and then we'll be able to play an apprentice at least, and double these counters. Okay, so we'll see if they've got some board wipe. If it's damage-based, the duelist should survive. And then uh, it might also pick up an extra counter from the apprentice. But uh, yeah, opponent scoops it up, so they didn't quite find what they were looking for. Alright, so we got to see our green-white plus one counter deck in action. And yeah, definitely got some solid additions with uh, Tumblewag especially, and then with a new two-mana artifact that can uh, potentially hide away something exciting. Still not quite sure how the top end of the deck should look like, how many Elspeths versus Wandering Emperors we want, and uh, can certainly play around with those numbers, but pretty happy with kind of the earlier part of the curve. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.